So thank you for the invitation uh, to give here these lectures. So, so the title is oh, Applications of on the Chow Motives to Algebraic Groups. So, but mostly I will speak about the orthogonal group just by time reasons. So mainly uh, so or equivalently uh, so about quadratic forms. So I will also mention some results uh, for general groups. Well, actually, yeah, you will see. Uh, so let me start uh, just with an, with an introduction. Uh, so Chow motives, uh, they were introduced by Alexander Grotendieck. Well, uh, in the 60s, uh, but then it was uh, some kind of a break so there were uh, just no, or just very few results about motives. Uh, and I think it went like this till, till 90s. Uh, but then it was some kind of breakthrough and uh, many results appear, I mean, really a lot. Uh, and it goes till now. I mean, it's, I mean this process uh, is still has not stopped. Uh, so let me mention some concrete results uh, which one can prove well, uh, using motives, but which do not involve motives in the formulations. Uh, well, some results are proved using motivic techniques. So I, I think the most famous result is uh, the Milner conjecture. So proved by Voivodsky, uh, and it uh, relies on uh, on the structure of the motif of a Pfister quadric. Uh, so it's a computation you know, due to Rost. And uh, more generally, there is uh, the block cutter conjecture. Uh, well, which is also proven uh, by Rost and Voivodsky. And uh, here, so a crucial point in the proof, it's uh, the structure of the motive of norm varieties. Well, so actually, just a remark, so Pfister qu quadric is not a norm variety, but uh, is not, I mean, it's almost. So it's, I mean, from this point of view, uh, there is no much difference. Well, so this is mm, probably the most celebrated results, but there are others. Uh, for instance, uh, Uh, Kapl Kaplansky problem on the U-invariant of fields. Well, so actually it's still open, but uh, there is some progress. 
Uh, well, so what is the univariant of a field? Uh, so this is by definition maximum of dimensions of Q uh, such that uh, Q is an anisotropic uh, quadratic form over F. Well, so the question is, so the question raised by Kaplansky, so what are possible finite, well, it can be infinite, but what are possible finite values of the univariate of fields? And uh, so there are many results uh, on the universe. For instance, uh, um, it was a conjecture of Ser uh, about H3 QPT, so about this, uh, Galois homology group. Uh, so he conjectured it consists of pure symbols, and also this is proved. So maybe by Parimala, and, uh, using I mean, I mean the first step is to compute the U invariant of this field. It, it is eight. Uh, so I mean, uh, this invariant has relations to other fields of mathematics. Well, and also, so I think the most, uh, I mean, the most famous progress is due to Vishek. And it's indeed some mativic kind of proof. Uh, so Vishek constructed fields with, with the univariants. So there exist fields with u invariants of the form to r plus one for all r starting from three. So for three, it's result of Ishbolden. So we should did it for all R. And uh, actually Kaplansky conjectured that it is not possible. So his original conjecture was that uh, the U invariant is always a power of two. Uh, but here it's a, an odd number. Well, it's, uh, of course, uh, um, so I think Merkuriev was uh, the first who constructed a field with the univariant six, so which is also, but this is a more striking result because it's an odd number. <laughs> Just, um, well, so then, uh, uh, so structure of quadratic forms in the nth power of the fundamental ideal of the Wittring. Uh, well, actually, I will talk later, I mean, not today, but I will talk uh, in my lectures uh, more about this point. So, uh, so again, it's not a result of one person, but it's, I mean, this problem has long history. Uh, and uh, so recently, uh, it was an essential progress. So maybe I will mention some names, Karpenko. Uh, no, Vishek, Merkuriev, uh, again using motives. I mean, it's very unexpected. I mean, so why should motive play here any role? Uh, well, so then another similar uh, question is Hoffman's conjecture. Uh, on higher with index, so on the first with index. of quadratic forms. So uh, yeah, so now it's a theorem, it's proven by Karpenko. Uh, uh, I mean the question I mean so the question is very basic. So you have all possible quadratic forms. What are possible uh, first with indices? Uh, well the naive answer is there are no restrictions, just uh, anything, but it's not true. I mean, there are restrictions. Could you remind for some of us what it goes to 
Uh, actually, I will, I, mean, I will later because I, I will talk about um, quadratic forms in more details. So it's, but it's just some, some numerical invariant of a quadratic form, some, some number. Uh, and so, so, I, mean, I mean, really, I mean, if you see the definition, you think, yeah, so it can be any number. But there are strong restrictions. And I mean, the Hoffman's conjecture says precisely what it is, and it's indeed true. Uh, well, so, but then, uh, so there are more tricky results concerning involutions on central simple algebras. I mean, here you, you really don't expect that algebraic geometry uh, can help so involutions on central simple algebras. So there were, well, again, it's a series of results. Uh, so maybe let me mention one, so the most recent result uh, due to uh, Karpenko and Zhehovic. Uh, so it's about unitary involutions, but it's in fact the most general case. So there are symplectic orthogonal involutions, but the I mean, if you know this statement for unitary involutions, you can reduce the orthogonal and symplectic cases by, by just elementary considerations. So namely, if you have a central simple algebra and an involution on it, Well then, uh, well, then what we want to do, we want to eliminate, to split A, but in the most uh, generic way. I mean, not to harm too much to the involution. So there is a standard way to do it. One passes to the function field of the Severy Brouwer variety, variety of A. Well, so everything is over F. And we pass to uh, the function field the Severy Brouwer variety of A. So then A becomes split. So it's just matrices, and sigma becomes a Hermitian form. Well, so say unitary involution. And then, uh, so conjecture, but now it's a theorem, uh, says that. Uh, if this involution was anisotropic, then it remains anisotropic. Uh, uh, so sigma remains anisotropic. Well, actually, it helps very much to study involutions. Uh, so, I mean, it's not the final result. There are many quite nice corollaries. So, so now there are applications of a different nature, uh, namely related to cohomological invariance of algebraic groups. Well, so again, uh, let me mention some concrete uh, examples. Uh, for instance, uh, so Sea uh, raised uh, some questions about uh, invariance of groups of type E8. Well, actually, more or less concrete uh, conjecture. Uh, so namely about an existence of certain invariant of degree 5. That's invariance in H5. And indeed, so there is such an invariant and it can be constructed using motives. And 
even more. So, uh, so, so one of the motivation here was the structure of finite subgroups of E8. And this can be also settled using actually the same, I mean, actually using this invariant. Well, and uh, so let me mention uh, the final application. Uh, so, uh, namely, uh, so maybe 20, 25 years ago, uh, so Rost and uh, independently uh, Springer. And so they raised a question about relations between uh, the Rost invariant and uh, uh, rationality of parabolic subgroups of type E7. Well, so possible relations. Well, actually, Rost had a very concrete conjecture, and uh, Springer, he raised just a question in general, is there a relation, and so what can we say about this? And indeed, uh, there is some, some sort of one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, in some sense, between Rost, values of the Rost invariant and rationality of some parabolic subgroups. Well, mm -hmm. And uh, this was settled using motives, like, like very recently. Uh, so actually, it's uh, in my joint paper with uh, Skip Garibaldi and Viktor Petrov. Uh, well, of course, uh, there are many more applications, but I will uh, just stop here. Uh, and you see. Uh, they look, I mean, the applications look uh, in some sense differently. And uh, here you see uh, classical groups like orthogonal group or like algebras with involutions. Uh, you see also exceptional groups like E7, E6, and uh, quite different results. I mean, there's sort of some numerical invariance or some cosmological invariance. Uh, well, so and now, in, in the rest of my lectures, I mean, today and the next days, uh, I will try to uh, give you an idea how is it possible, I mean, how exactly uh, algebraic cycles and motives help uh, to prove purely algebraic results. I mean, any of these statements, especially about quadratic forms, can be explained to the first year student. I mean, he will understand the formulation, uh, but the solution is very geometric. Uh, well, so let me start uh, first. Uh, well, so you see what uh, I need to do. I need to explain a little bit. Uh, so what are Chow motives? Just without proofs. Uh, and also, I need to explain something about quadratic forms. And then I should combine. <laughs> I, mean, this, I mean, the last part is the most tricky part. To combine so that uh, everyone here will just clearly understand so that there is no miracle. Uh, uh, so let me start with, um, with the it's a very short, actually, introduction to to the Chow motives. Well, uh, so first, I mean, before defining them, uh, let me define I mean, very briefly, so sketch uh, 
the concept of oriented uh, cohomology theories. Uh, well, in the sense of uh, Levin Morel, well, or uh, Panyan's Smenov. Well, actually, um, I will not go into technical details, so you will not see any difference. I mean, it, it's, it's not quite the same axiomatic, but you will not notice any difference now. Well, so first, uh, let me fix uh, our base field, K or F. And uh, so the category of smooth Uh, quasi-projective varieties over K. Well, so what is an oriented cohomology theory? Uh, uh, so this is a functor, A star, from this category. Uh, to the category of graded commutative rings. So rings which are graded. Uh, satisfying a long list of axioms. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, it's not, I mean, I don't want to, to give a complete list. It's too long. Uh, but uh, let me mention you some, just some axioms, some typical axioms, uh, just uh, so that uh, you have a feeling how it looks like. So first, uh, so actually it's important, we need push forwards for proper maps. So if we have a proper map from, say, y to x, so then there is a push forward. Well, so to be precise with the grading, uh, so it increases the degree by d, where d is the relative dimension. So proper of relative dimension d. Uh, and again, uh, this push forward satisfies some axioms. Uh, well, I don't know, for instance, this one, some natural uh, compatibilities. Uh, also projection formula. Uh, which is also probably... Uh, so, so. Uh, quite famous thing. Uh, so here, uh, so this uh, this is push forward, and this is pullback, which comes. I mean, since uh, we have a functor, oh, oh sorry, I forgot to put here so, contravariant functor. So then uh, we immediately have F upper star, uh, which changes uh, the direction of, of, of X and Y. And this we have always, just by the very definition, because it's functor. Well, and also localization sequence, for instance, so let us require it. Uh, so homotopy invariance, well, and, and so on. But there is one more axiom, which is important, uh, which makes the theory orientable, uh, so namely the existence of Chern classes.
well, so churn classes relative to this theory A. Uh, so namely, uh, as soon as we have a see, rank R vector bundle over X, we automatically have uh, churn classes. Well, so uh, well, it's better to put uh, the letter A here just to distinguish because it really depends very much on A, uh, but usually I will drop it. So I will omit A and so this is an element in AI of X. So the ith churn class. Well, and again, satisfying some list of axioms, uh, for instance, uh, C0 is 1. Uh, if we go further than the rank we get zero, so everything is between zero and R. So R is the rank. Uh, there is the Whitney formula. Uh, so namely, if we have a short exact sequence of uh, vector bundles, Uh, so then we can express uh, the churn classes of E using the churn classes of E prime and E double prime. Uh, well, actually, oh, I even have a formula here. Cn of E is a sum. And uh, I think the, so maybe the most important, uh, what happens if we take the first churn class of a line bundle over X? Uh, tensor, some other line bundle over X. Well, well let me put here A just to stress that uh, uh, it will be not this, so it's not true, uh, but almost. Uh, uh, so namely, if you put here A, uh, it will be correct. Uh, so namely, actually at this point we get uh, a formal group law well, associated with A. Uh, well, and we need to plug in the first term classes of L and L prime. So what is the formal group law? So FGL of A, so it's well of two variables. Uh, it's just a power series so in A uh, well actually this is I mean this is the notation for FGL okay so just I mean it's it just the definition uh, so it uh, so it's the same as x plus y, okay, by definition. Uh, well, so it's a power series uh, satisfying uh, well, th th three axioms. So it's symmetric. Uh, so if you add zero, uh, nothing happens. Well, in the same. And uh, the most tricky axiom, so it doesn't matter how you put brackets here, uh, it will be the same power series. Okay, well, uh, 
so and now every well this is actually the end of the, de of the definition of, a, of an oriented cohomology theory and now let let me specialize this definition to get uh, well, some familiar uh, theories like Chow groups or Chow rings or K0 So examples. Well, uh, we can take uh, just the additive formal group law, like with this FGL, but just x plus y. Uh, so and then, uh, so the respective oriented cohomology theory will be the Chow theory. Uh, well, of course, it's not quite true because there are many theories uh, with the additive formal group law, uh, but this is the universal. So this is so the universal uh, oriented cohomology uh, theory, also in the sense of Levin-Morel, uh, with additive formal group law. Now with this formal group law. Uh, if we take uh, x plus y minus beta x y, uh, then we get k0 oh. uh, of growth index. So it's multiplicative formal group law. Well, so if we take a uh, universal formal group law, then we get uh, the algebraic coordinate. Well, and uh, so there is also one uh, so pretty nice formal group law, or formal group laws, so there are many, uh, which give you so the Moravaki theory. Uh, which is actually also quite useful for, uh, I mean, not for applications I mentioned, but for th for some other applications, strangely. You're creating this over introduced right? and created rings, A star, upper star. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, but uh, chern, uh, chern classes are by definition in non negative degrees. By definition. Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the ring is commutative and graded. Yeah, graded. No, not graded. Commutative. Uh, commutative, graded. Commutative, graded. Commu or, or graded and commutative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like H2M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, uh, as I said, so now, from now on, we will be interested mainly here in this group, but y you should just note that for applications I mentioned, uh, so we should consider, for instance, omega. It's, it, and it's crucial, so it's essential that he needs omega, not chow. Uh, there are applications where you need uh, the Moravaki theory or, uh, well, usual K0. So it's, it's better not to fix, I mean, not to restrict ourselves just to, to chow. 
but uh, I do it in this generality because it's the same. I mean, in the constructions I am going to give you I mean, of Chow motifs, instead of Chow motifs, you can take any oriented cohomology theory like this, the same definition. So, I mean, we... Uh, for Kaplansky problem? Uh, so, I mean, Vishik uses... We should use omega a lot. Okay. Operations, I mean... So it is omega which is used by which Yeah, we should mainly... I mean, in, in, well, in that precise result, yes, yes. Uh, for instance, in the result of Mercuriev, with the univariant 6, he used K0. But, uh, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> by the way, uh, is Marava K theory applicable to the univariant problem? Any help? Uh, hmm. I don't know. No, so okay. it, it can be. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, what I wrote here, you can take as definition of Chow groups, so universal oriented homology theory with, with this formal group. But uh, Actually, of course, there is a geometric definition. So let, let me go, let me pass to Chow. Uh, so geometric uh, definition of Chow. Uh, of course, I will not give it. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a long story. Uh, but just, I will need it for the rest, I mean, for the future, for the next lectures. So I, I will need something. So namely, uh, Um, well, let's put for a, for a minute lower index here, not the upper one, and let's define it as uh, the L of X modula, the rational equivalence, where the L of X is a free abelian group. Uh, generated by all closed L-dimensional subvarieties of X. Also, it's the same as the group of L-dimensional cycles, so L-cycles. here. Well, well, modular sum equivalence, which I do not want to define because I will not need it in the rest of the lectures. Uh, but I will need, uh, I mean, it's good to know how the generators look like. So the generators are sub varieties of dimension L and to switch between dimension and co-dimension. Uh, so let me also write this formula. Uh, so this is, well, we will need it many times. Well, this is for irreducible x, and if x, just to avoid, uh, well, if x has several components, then one should be, well, for equidimensional x, okay. Okay, so let me give you also some con so very concrete examples uh, of child groups because we will, I mean, I'm collecting some information now. So, I mean, what I'm telling you now, we will use it in the subsequent lectures. Uh, so, it might look elementary, but I would like still to have it written down. So 
So we will need uh, the Chow group of, of the finite space, but uh, this is just uh, the same as Chow of spec F, uh, which is Z by homotopy invariance. So then we will need the Chow group of a projective space. Also, this is uh, homotopy invariance. Well, and this is if you want a projective bundle theorem. So namely, this is Z, H, modulo H, N plus one. And this H uh, has a concrete geometric interpretation. So H has degree one. So it's an element in Chow one of Pn. This is the Picar. Well, actually, this is true in general for any smooth variety, and we, we also will need it, actually, that Chow 1 is the same as Pic. Uh, and this is the class of Pn minus 1, so any hyperplane section, so any, uh, yeah, any hyperplane in Pn. Uh, well, and this is, so inequality or an isomorphism as rings, so including multiplication. Uh, in particular, you see in each degree there is one generator. So in degree zero, one up to n. And uh, so if you draw such a diagram, so which is so a Hasse diagram, For Pn, so it's a chain. Just if you just order uh, uh, three generators in each degree, so there is only one. Uh, so what the edges mean, uh, I would like not to explain, but there is also a meaning for edges uh, on this diagram. But let me skip it. Uh, I mean, here it's very elementary, but soon, say for quadrics, it will be uh, more interesting. So, uh, well, and also, so maybe the last example, uh, so what is the Chow group of a product of two projective spaces? Well, so there is uh, the Cunard formula. Uh, so this is just Uh, the tensor, but please pay attention, the Cunard formula is usually wrong. So it's only true if the varieties here are very nice. Uh, for instance, cellular, which is of course the case. But in general, uh, it's, it's of course not true. It, mm, yeah, but actually, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a funny thing that for the applications, for the most applications, the torsion is just because of the torsion, we prove them. <laughs> and the torsion is the most essential part. Actually, the proof of the Milner conjecture. So I think the original title of the paper of Voivodsky was to torsion in Mativica homology. So, so the Milner conjecture is a question about torsion. So, I mean, uh, we can't ignore it at all, but yeah, I think modular torsion, one can say much more. Uh, I mean, for the Kuhn's formula, uh, but ah, so here uh, we can also draw a diagram like this. Uh, for instance, uh, if n is m is one, so then it will look like and just look at the formula to. Uh, so it will look like this. And so one generator in degree zero, two in degree one, and one in, because it's, I mean, so it's tensor product of, I mean, this is the diagram for Chow of P1. And uh, so we have a tensor product of two Hasse diagrams and get this one for P1 times P1. So it looks like, like this.
Okay. Actually, uh, so more general, so there is the periodic composition. And actually, one should draw these pictures in general for cell of rises, which... Uh, so, so homogeneous varieties, G mod P. Uh, and uh, so in this context, all this picture you know, can be done, treated uh, in, in a unified way. Okay, so I see I'm... Ah, so G, uh, well, say, uh, actually, I will come to this uh, a bit later, but uh, so G is any split uh, semi-simple uh, algebraic group, and P is any parabolic subgroup of G. Uh, so then one can draw these pictures and they help actually a lot to visualize uh, what's going on so on the level of child groups and motives. Uh, but formally, of course, we don't need them, but they just help to understand better uh, the picture I and mean, the situation. Um, okay, I think everything is ready to define uh, the chow motives. So we start now with uh, smooth projective varieties. Over our field K. And first we form the category CK. So the category of correspondences uh, in the following way. So the objects in CK are the same as the objects are smooth projective varieties. And the morphism in CK between X and Y is defined uh, well. So depending on whether X irreducible or not, we can write a simple formula or a more complicated one. Uh, so it looks like this. I mean, this is if x is irreducible. Well, if not, uh, we need to distinguish dimensions of irreducible components. So in general, uh, it's a uh, direct sum. over all irreducible components of X. So Xi. Well, uh, of course, uh, if you write something like this, it's uh, well, depending on whether you know this definition or not. Uh, it's not obvious uh, why th this is a category, so why you can come, or how you can compose uh, the morphism, the morphisms, okay, uh, so it doesn't take too much time to explain just in case someone did not see it before. Uh, it's, uh, well, assuming everything is irreducible and forgetting about grading, so it's a <laughs> <just, laughs> funny exercise to check that the grading fits. Uh, so indeed, it's correct. <laughs> Uh, well, so if you have a morphism 
from x to y and then a morphism from y to z say f and g and we want somehow to produce a morphism from x to z Uh, well, FG was a GF. Uh, well, just uh, so let's do the only possible manipulation with letters. Uh, well. Well, just substituting the morphism by, by the child groups. So here is F and here is G. So then we have a product X times Y times Z. And we need so a result in X times Z. Well, so let's first of all go from here to here. Uh, and we can do it using projections. So there are obvious projections from this triple product to x times y and to y times z. Uh, well, let's take pullback, which reverses the errors. So here, so then we get here the pullback of F and pullback of G. Uh, but this is a ring. So we can multiply them. So this times this. And then we, we need a map, map here. Again, a projection, but now we take the push forward. So we can do it because all varieties here are projective. Smooth projective, just by the very definition. Uh, so projection to x, z, push forwards. So in here we get an element, so projection x, z, push forward of the product. which is called f times uh, g times f. Uh, well, actually, note that now we have three operations. So plus usual multiplication, so intersection product, plus this uh, tricky composition product. OK. Well, uh, that's it. So that's uh, the definition of the category of, uh, of correspondences. And uh, the last step, but just, I think, two lines to the category of motives. Also, the objects are now pairs. The x is a smooth projective right, huh? as before. And pi is an endomorphism of x in the category C. Uh, well, if x is irreducible, this is just uh, the child group. of x times x, uh, satisfying the equation p times p is p. 
with respect to this composition product, not the intersection product, but composition product. Yeah, and the morphisms in this category M uh, between X Hi, Y rho. Uh, well, these are morphisms between X and Y composed with the pi and rho. Actually, more or less the only way to, to write some formula in the correct way involving all letters. Well, that's it. And uh, maybe the last thing, uh, if uh, there is the identity morphism, of course, for any x, there is delta x. Identity. Uh, it means that uh, delta x composed with any alpha is alpha, and oh, for all alpha and, and beta, just uh, it exists and it's unique. Uh, and uh, now, if you have a variety x, the motif of x, it's looks as follows by definition Should be a pair and we take x comma delta x. So it's called the motive of x. Uh, well okay, so we will need also Tate motives. and one small commutative diagram. So namely, so we will need a realization functor. So I have one minute. So I think it's okay to explain you realization. Uh, just to draw a diagram. Uh, well, so here we have our smooth projective rises. So then we have Motives. So, no, yeah. Let's draw it here. And here we have uh, graded abelian groups. Uh, so here x. Okay, so here x goes to the motive of x. Here, x goes to the Chow group of x. No, actually, graded by dimension. And here, so there is a realization factor, uh, which makes uh, this diagram commute. Uh, well, actually, uh, so it looks maybe very naively, but there are indeed applications uh, that people don't know how to compute Chow of X, uh, but what they do, they take the motive, do something with the motive, decompose it, compute uh, the, the Chow groups of uh, some summons, take the realization, get a complete, yeah. I mean, there are indeed examples like this, and uh, uh, no one knows how to do it uh, di directly. So, so it, it looks very like a very basic diagram, but it, it's useful sometimes. Well, 
well, actually, the only thing which is missing are Tate motives, just as a preparation. Uh, and I will do, do this the next time. bundles you can define a uh, first chain class of a line bundle. You don't know that it is a first chain class. But then you put the axiom that mm -hmm. it satisfies the projective bundle here. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is the axiom. Mm -hmm. This class uh, satisfies projective bundle uh, theory. Uh, and then uh, you can invent after that uh, invent uh, all other chain classes in a standard way and prove QNET formula uh, and prove um, uh, that there is a formal group law uh, such that. Yeah. So the real axiom is the projective bundle uh, uh, axiom mm -hmm. for the first chain class, which exists. Uh, so you take the zero section of line bundle, the zero section, uh, put it uh, on, uh, on this uh, uh, section put the element one. Our theory is ring to the model theory. Put one, push it forward. It, you will get an element in Kuramon the theory uh, of the line bundle and then pull it back. The resultant element uh, calls the first chain class of the line bundle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is my comment. Mm -hmm. So this one the variety to write it uh, we have group is covariant covariant. Ah. Uh, I think so. I mean if we grade it by dimension I don't see the functionality. So I think I think it is covariant. I think it is covariant in this diagram. For any program, the, the, uh, grading is not preserved, isn't it? Uh, but grading by dimension is preserved? By dimension is preserved. Hmm? Uh, yeah, well, so pullback preserves co-dimension and push forward preserves ah. dimension. Yeah. Ah, OK, sorry, sorry. I think it's uh, actually an important point that it's this, so here, not rings, but groups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So multiplication is not respected by this diagram. It's uh, crucial. Yeah. No, no way. Okay. So, 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 uh, no, I, I think actually many, many years ago, I checked all these <laughs> dimension, co-dimension things. Uh, but uh, so I think now it is stable. But in emergency, in a very unlikely emergency case, just change the left and right, up and then. <laughs> but I mean, the, at whole, it does not uh, disturb anything. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? So let us thank the lecture again.